as he uh, himself says, you know, he's the underdog in this race. But uh, it's great to have the opportunity to set his stall out. In, in my view, he's by far the best candidate to be our next prime minister. He's got the intellect. He's got the all, all the features we need from somebody who can beat Labour in the next election, which is crucial, of course. Um, he is a genuine, authentic Brexiteer. That's the most important thing right now. I think we need somebody who understands Brexit, who campaigned for Brexit, and somebody who can make the most of it, because I think there's a world of opportunity out there. But we need somebody who can really deliver on that opportunity. But can he deliver on that messaging? Because, well, the question I ask you is, why do you think the party aren't supporting him? He's laid out that stall already, but for some reason it's not gaining traction. Well, I've got to say, my own experience in my constituency, and I'm a North Yorkshire Member of Parliament, neighbouring Rishi, I've known him for a long time since we both entered politics, national politics, but um, my membership uh, in my polls is well ahead of Liz, so we'll see what happens on the on the big poll, which obviously the results of which are announced on September the 5th, but um, my members in my recent poll were we're supporting Rishi uh, by a factor of three to one over, over Liz. But um, this is a national poll, of course, ultimately, and we've got to make sure that he gets across the line. But the most important thing is we need somebody who understands the economy, who's got a track record of delivery um, at, in the most important uh, battle we've got right now, which is inflation, of course, and the cost of living. Rishi has proved himself time and time again over the last two years, dealing with two huge crises in this country. First of all, the COVID crisis, uh, and now the cost of living crisis. I think he's got the intellect and the and the ideas and the ability to innovate and implement, which is absolutely critical in all walks of life, but not, not least politics. What do you make of some of the, the criticisms of his persona? Number one, that he's sort of too slick uh, and not so uh, approachable and too polished. And the second one being that he really was part of the, the, the manufacturing of the downfall of Boris Johnson. I hear this stuff about being too slick. I mean, if, if people mean is he too good, um, I think he's really, really good, actually. And in terms of his personal characteristics, um, well, he's, I tell you, he's the first a, a cabinet minister I have known who knows my kids' names. They all love him. I've seen him in his constituency talking to people of all different backgrounds, uh, different ilks. He's fantastic with people. He's, he's just a really decent honest, straightforward person, in my view. Um, and he's got real uh, personal ability to connect with people personally, as well as to express his ideas and articulate them very clearly. Um, so uh, so no, I, I don't really get that characterization of him. So uh, in my view, he's the right person. Uh, so he's got the right personal characteristics, as well as the intellect and, and um, the ability to innovate. We talk about his sort of personal characteristics, but the weekend really has been one of robust sort of mudslinging, both candidates really at attacking the other. If you just take your, yourself out of the sort of ready for Rishi camp for one second and just talk to us as a Conservative MP, are you nervous about the optics of what this is doing to the Conservative Party for the public at large? Well, listen, this, this is bound to be a robust debate, and it should be about the issues, not about the uh, personal. It should be a per, about personal attacks. Um, I've got to say, one of the TV debates I saw uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, the presenter asked the audience who was more likely to vote Conservative after hearing that debate. There was more candidates involved at that stage, and I think, ten, surprisingly, I think for the, from the pre presenter's perspective, ten people raised their hands and said they were more likely to vote Conservatives. So I think as long as it's about the issues and about the ideas, that's that's welcome to have that robust debate. And uh, but it shouldn't be personal attacks. And I haven't seen too much of that to be fair. I think it's been about who can actually take the country forward, which is exactly what I believe Rishi can do um, at this crucial time. You know, it's really about delivery. If you listen to Rishi speaking, whether it's about immigration, about his policies on China, I think he's got those ideas. Crucially. It's not just about ideas, it's about the ability to implement. And I, if you see what Rishi's done in terms of running the economy, uh, implementing all those schemes into, that help businesses and millions and millions, protecting millions of jobs over the last couple of years, he's got the ability not just to think about the ideas, but to put the, those ideas in practice. One issue you haven't mentioned there is the NHS, and this report is on the front cover of many of the papers talking about the greatest staffing crisis to the NHS. Just briefly, Rishi will have the floor tonight at the debate. What's his pitch to say, I'm going to protect the National Health Service? 
Well, he's shown he's put a record amount of money into the NHS, of course, and another £40 billion over the next um, in this parliament um, to make sure we can tackle the backlog and tackle some of the staffing crises. There is a, a, a basically a labour shortage right across the economy. That's really, really tough right now. But um, as I say, Rishi's uh, the person who can come up with the ideas and, and implement them. I think, crucially, what we've got to do is make sure the NHS is more efficient, that it's less managerial, more practical, delivers more from, um, you, from the money we have available. It can't just be about more and more money. It's got to be much more efficient than it is today, and that's really about putting best practice management in place. Which has got an MBA from Stanford University. He's, he understands what we need to do to, be, to make sure we can do that, but... Um, just needs that time and uh, and the opportunity in number ten to be able to put these things in in place. But it's is there's no doubt it is going to be a tough battle you know, on many different fronts over the next few years, and that's why we need the right pair of hands, the safe pair of hands, to be able to take this forward.